Hello and good morning. Today we're going to show you the Land Rover to OM606 adapter kit. Follow me. Right, so using the power of video magic, we've gone from over there, which was five meters away, to over here, which is amazing. And here it is, the Land Rover adapter kit. So, you'll notice some changes, and this is kind of one of the reasons I wanted to show you. Um, our flywheel has now been modified. Um, this is our billet, a CNC flywheel, it's steel. Um, fairly thin, it's quite lightweight, but steel, it's super strong. How nice does that look? That is a very, very nice piece of kit. Um, so, this comes as standard with all of our Land Rover um, clutch and adapter kits. Now, this uh, adapter plate, our kit, is um, usable on the 200 TDI and 300 TDI platforms. So, as you'll be aware, the 200 TDI, it centers using a, a sort of a spigot ring in the middle of the box. The 300 TDI style bell housing, it centers differently. Um, and what, what we do for that is we supply two dowels in the kit and there's two dowel holes here and here. And basically you take your 300 TDI bell housing and you'd sit it straight on those dowels. I don't want to push those dowels in because this is a customer's and I don't know what he will choose to use, whether they will use the old style or the newer style. But basically that's how it works. Um, and one thing to note, just that I'd like to show you um, just run you through the fitting process it's fairly straightforward um, as you can see the flywheel has no ring gear on it that is because it has been designed to accept the standard OM606 uh, flex plate and the good news about this is for the guys who want to use an EDC pump not that I'd recommend it um, you can fit this and use the trigger ring pickup um, it fits directly to the back of the flywheel um, so I'm going to show you how to do that now. Right, so what, what you do is, you turn your flywheel over. You take your, uh, your flex plate. Now this is specific to the 606. 605s don't have this style flex plate and neither do the other engines. So if you are not fitting my kit into a 606, let me know. We either need to get you a 606 flex plate or do you the older style kit but it's not as cool, the new one is cool. Right, so you wanna line up the uh, dowel pin, the crankshaft dowel pin with this, just roughly. None of this has to be super accurate. And then what you would do is your original flex plate bolts that went into your torque converter, this is one of the most important things. Um, these have to go just loosely in the holes. Obviously these aren't the real ones, the real ones are um, they're a hex head instead of an Allen head. But you just loosely fasten that on. Notice I haven't done it tight. You don't want the bolts like literally hanging out because you won't be able to turn the flywheel over. So you want to do that loosely and I'll show you why. Because if you look, uh, at this stage, because there's no spigot in, you can move that around. And what we want to do is put both of these components onto the engine. So the engine's centre pin spigot centralises them. Then we tighten the bolts. And we know that the flex plate is perfectly true onto the back of the flywheel. So take the whole assembly like that. It's kind of looks like more like a normal flywheel, but cooler. And then it just literally drops on like that. And then once you've got that, you can put in your bolts, which come in the kit. You get a kit bag full of fitting uh, hardware. You get your uh, these really nice 10.9 uh, flywheel bolts. So you put those in, and then once, once they're all tight, you would then go around um, turning your engine over using the normal access hole and tighten up those bolts. You only have to do that once. So if you ever chose to take the flywheel off for any particular reason, uh, once that's tight and centralized on there, you never have to do it again. Um, so yeah, that's the first step. Then the next stage, you get your adapter plate. Now what I like to do is, depending on how your arrangement is, uh, your bell housing is going to need a cutout for the starter because the Mercedes starter motor is in a different position to the Land Rover one, of course. Um, so you take your, uh, your bell housing uh, or your gearbox, however you want to do it. I'm just showing you this because I have a loose bell housing here. Um, Centralise it on the spigots 
Um, uh, centralize it on the DAO thing, sorry. I'm just lining it up by eye because this is uh, obviously just a video. And you can see on this side, you have a, a nice groove cut out for the, um, the slave cylinder. That's for the 300 TDI, and that the other side is a cut out for the 200 TDI version. That's not really relevant, I was just showing you that. But you're going to have to make your starter cut out. So at this point, come round this side, and you see where the, uh, where the starter cut out is for the Mercedes. It's a shame that it wasn't just bang in line. But what I would do is, you basically just need to make a couple of marks on either side of your bell housing. You do it slightly more accurately than that. You can do it on the inside and then flip it over. Um, and then you want to take a hole saw. You can do this any way you want, but I find the hole saw is the neatest, quickest way of making it look good. So you take a hole saw and between the two marks that you've just made, you take your hole saw in the drill and you don't want to actually put the drill through the casing. You want to rest the drill against the side of the casing and very gently, because it's going to try and jump off at you, um, just take the semicircle out of there. And what you will end up with is uh, is a BMW one that I've done earlier. This is obviously for a different application. But you see, you'll end up with this kind of cutout that looks fairly neat. Um, and that, that basically, um, yeah, so that basically works. So then you take your uh, adapter plate and you're gonna mount it to your engine. You wanna have the Land Rover facing gearbox side. Um, and at this stage, we're gonna bolt the starter motor to it. Now, a few guys have sort of said, well, how do I get my starter motor off um, once the adapter plate's bolted? What I find the easiest way to be is when you do your slight cutout for the uh, starter motor, Bendix, at the same time, make a drilling, because you can basically bolt the adapter plate to your gearbox or bell housing while it's off. Make a drilling through the actual gearbox casing in line with the two gearbox holes. And then that'll give you room to use just a simple a simple six mil Allen key through that hole. So through the hole that you've just literally drilled, you'll be able to pop that in and you'll be able to undo your starter motor should you ever need to. You can always pop a rubber bung in there or something to stop dirt getting in. It's not really gonna make a great deal of difference because you're gonna have a cut out there anyway. Um, Sadly, there is no better way of doing it. You can't put studs on the back of the uh, adapter plate because then you, the starter motor, you would have to drill it out and that would be a bodge and it would be moving round. It wouldn't be essential. It's not worth doing. That is the best way. Just grease up those bolts, make sure they're protected and then you can wind them in and out. In and out. Saying that, it's very rare that you should ever change a starter. So, right. So that's that, that bit covered. Put all your bolts in, your countersink bolts, they're the ones that hold it to there. Um, you're gonna take your oil light, this is an oil impregnated bronze bushing, um, and that is gonna knock straight into the center of your crankshaft. So you can see there, um, you're gonna tap that straight in, do it with something very soft, because this is fairly soft material, you don't wanna bruise it and ruin it. Just tap that in until it's flush with the, uh, with the end of the crankshaft. That is gonna locate your um, input shaft with the gearbox, very important, you put that in, it comes with the kit. So you pop that in, and then you're gonna, uh, obviously you've tightened all your bolts up, you've, um, some people like to use Loctite on the counter sinks, that's your call. Um, I do sometimes use a tiny bit, just for that peace of mind again, but it's not essential, we don't tend to come loose, it's very rare. Um, so you're gonna locate your, um, your drive plate, nice heavy duty drive plate with the good, um, organic friction material. Now the good thing about these is uh, very strong, good uh, clutch discs, very very strong springs so they'll take quite a lot of load um, and that's exactly what you need if you're going to be doing some towing and that kind of thing. You do not ever want to have something like a paddle clutch, something with sinters, you know the uh, when you see the paddle copper looking ones they're going to be snatchy and grabby, these are nice, they take up really well. And then we're going to use genuine sax racing clutch cover they are the best, there isn't anything that gets better than these, they are amazing. They will handle 600 plus horsepower. They are a genuine sack racing cover, so there may be other covers out there available, but nothing comes close. But yeah, 
the clamp load on these is amazing. Pedal's gonna be a little bit heavier than normal, so you can either use a booster to prevent that, um, or you can live with it as it is, uh, but you're never ever gonna have a slipping clutch. These things are amazing. So, and, and all of our kits uh, come with these. So that'll center on the dowels that, that come in the flywheel. Obviously that'll be rolling down and not loose. Um, and then you'll have your cut out and it'll be a case of putting your dowels in or centering it on the spigot, depending if you're 200 or 300 TDI. Um, apply your gearbox uh, and away you go. In some, applic some applications, you do have to adjust the, um, the uh, pivot point, which I'll show you. I don't think the last Land Rover that I did, I had to adjust it. So like on some applications, if you're having problems with clutch engagement or it isn't clearing properly, this little pin inside here, um, you can sort of space it out, screw it in, screw it out. Um, but from memory, I don't think the Land Rover ones ever need that doing. I think you can just rock it straight out of the box with no issues. Um, what else do I need to cover? Oh yes, we also do a heavy duty um, release bearing. This isn't part of the kit. Um, because as you probably are aware, if you're already looking at these kits, our kits are probably the most price competitive, as well as the, well, I think, I hope, the best engineered kit on the market. Um, so we don't have any margin to throw one of these bad boys in. However, you can buy them from our shop and they are awesome. They're a heavy duty uh, release bearing designed for, you know, particularly tough, clutches and clutch covers like that so um so yeah i hope you've enjoyed the video i hope it's helped when it comes to fitting your uh, your uh, adapter kit into your land rover however if you do have any problems at all and this applies to not just this but our custom pumps and the other bits that we sell um you know the alternator brackets or the land rover mounts or any other land rover related 606 conversion bits just give me a shout write me a message whatever i'll be happy to help have a nice day